Farron Cousins is on the line with us. He's the co-host of Ring of Fire Radio, the executive editor of the Trial Lawyers Magazine. Ringoffireradio.com is the website. Hey, Farron. Hey, Tom. How are you? Great. Great to have you with us. Thank uh, you. you uh, what's on your mind today? <laughs> well, you know, as you know, I'm, I'm kind of angry in general. But this past week, uh, you know, I'm seeing a lot of stories from really great, respectable uh, progressives talking about the fact that Bernie Sanders has yet to overcome this electability problem. And, you know, they're using it in regards to uh, Antonin Scalia's death, saying, look, this just shows why we've got to nominate a Democrat who is electable so that we can make sure we get uh, liberal Supreme Court justices. And the only electable Democrat running for president is Hillary Clinton. Again, I, you know, I don't want to get into the name game with these people, but I'm sure a lot of us have seen those, those kinds of stories. But when these people make these claims that Bernie Sanders is not electable, it, it completely defies all of the available data that we have that shows not only is Bernie Sanders electable, but right now out of every single person running for president, he is the most electable. And we have well, phenomenal according writers to the PVP polling that just came out, but right. uh, you know that he beats the Republicans more aggressively than Hillary. That yeah, I've heard that hit. I think that that hit of his electability. Uh, you know, he's he's won a couple of elections now. I think that that's fading away. The the new hit on Bernie, and and this is one that's going to be real interesting to see how how they respond to. And it's coming from people like Austin Goolsby, who worked in the Obama administration, is that uh, an economist? is that his numbers don't add up. You know, he, he can't, he's not going to be able to do all these things that he says he's going to be able to do uh, because, he, you know, the math isn't right. What do you think about that? Well, you know, we're hearing that a lot too. Not only that the math doesn't add up or, or things of that nature. Look, a lot of times when you look at budget issues, the math does not add up. But they're also basing it on, you know, what we currently get, the projected uh, money that we could get if we close offshore tax havens, if we do increase taxes on the risk uh, of the rich. There are a lot of factors in these equations and not all of the equations take all the factors into account. So, uh, but it, it's really just an extension of the pragmatism versus, you know, idealism argument that they've been trying to make for several weeks by telling us that, look, Bernie Sanders, he's a great guy, but, you know, we need to aim low as a Democratic Party. We need to just stay the course. And these are the same people who eight years ago were out there shouting hope and change. And now it, that mantra has become settle and make do. Aim so low that nobody even realizes if you do accomplish a goal and oh, that's come not on. acceptable. Yeah. Farron, the, you know, the Obama administration has not accomplished a lot of things that you and I would both like them to have done. Um, on the other hand, they've accomplished, I mean, you know, Iran, Cuba, I mean, they, you know, there's some really consequential accomplishments of this administration right. and, and Hillary Clinton's, uh, uh, narrative. I, I mean, everybody knows Bernie's narrative, right? We're, we're, we're going to give everybody health care. We're going to give everybody free education. And, you know, this is what Austin Goolsby is calling, you know, uh, rainbows and unicorns. And, and, and Hillary's argument is, you know, if you liked the Obama administration, you'll like me as president because I'm going to continue these policies, which are progressive. They're moving in a progressive direction, by and large. They're just far more incremental. Um, isn't that, I, I, you know, I think that that's a legitimate argument to make. I, it, it's not the argument that I, you know, that, that, that rings my bells, but there are a lot of Americans who are, and, and a lot of Democrats who are somewhat uh, conservative. And I don't mean in the conservative sense, like, you know, Republicans are crazy conservative, but, but that, you know, just are, are cautious, shall we say. So how do you, how do you talk to them if, if that's your concern? Well, I, I think a lot of it just has to do with disillusionment in general. Yeah. You know, we all had high, high expectations of uh, President Obama when he came into office. Uh, and, and part of it has been the massive Republican obstruction. I mean, the last four years, we've had Congresses uh, that have passed fewer bills than ever. Right. And so, yeah, Obama's been met with a lot of opposition. But up until this, really this last State of the Union and possibly maybe as far back as Christmas time, Obama has not been willing to get out there, get behind a microphone and say, look, here's the problem. The problem is that I want to do this. I want to do this on gun control. 
but these people won't let me do it. You, the American public, you want this. I'm trying to do it. They won't let me. If we had seen that for the six and a half years prior, we would be looking at an entirely different. Well, he's given a lot of speeches like that on gun control. What he hasn't done is said, I'd like a million people to come to Washington, D.C. and fill them all. Right. Well, you know, and it goes beyond gun control. If if he would have taken action on Wall Street, if he would have reined in the, the corruption there, if he would have, you know, sent some people to prison for that, if he would have been a little bit more aggressive on, on voting rights, we would be looking at a very different campaign because if Obama had done a lot of the things he promised to do, a lot of the things he tried to do, I honestly don't think Bernie Sanders would necessarily be running right now and Hillary Clinton would not be running into as many problems as she currently is. Like her Wall Street speeches, for example. Uh, that wouldn't, those speeches likely would not have happened. That money would not be an issue if Obama had done what he said he would do and rein in the corruption on Wall Street. So, you know, a lot of ways, the problems that she is facing are a result of the inaction over the last seven years. Well, this is, you know, I see this as a symptom of, of a larger issue, which is that the Democratic Party has, uh, since the death of the union movement, by and large, or the murder of the union movement by the Ronald Reagan administration, the Democratic Party has, you know, parties, political parties have to survive. They need money. They're, they've been moving in the direction of, well, Al Fromm's idea was, hey, you know, we need to bring some, some corporate friends in let's get at least ones who have clean hands let's not get the tobacco industry let's not get the oil guys let's go to the banks you know banking is a nice clean business and and bring them in and it's just kind of backfired on you know or it's in the process i think of backfiring actually i think it has been for the last couple of years on the democratic party to some extent and it's it, it, it seems to me like this is a good time for some soul searching in the party and and that, you know, Bernie's campaign is, I think, is provoking that. And I think that that's a good and healthy thing for the party. A discussion, Absolutely. debate. Oh, well, I was going to say, you know, uh, along those lines, before the 2008 election, the two top groups that were funding the Democratic Party were the trial lawyers and the unions, right. you know, the people fighting to protect consumers and the people fighting to make workplace uh, protections and pay fair. And right. that was the backbone, the heart of the Democratic Party. And, and today, you know, post Citizens United, post McCutcheon, we're back up to seeing pharmaceuticals and insurance companies and Wall Street banks. All of these people that are out there, maybe not all of them doing illegal things, but we're all being ripped off. I mean, but and and, you know, and, and we can take this back to the Republican decision in in 1980 and this was very i mean you know this is not a secret david stockman wrote about this in his book you know this whole star of the beast idea uh as one piece of it but basically the republican decision that the principal funders as you just said of the democratic party or many Dem many parts of the democratic party were the trial lawyers and the unions and so let's destroy the unions everybody knows how that happened and let's destroy the trial lawyers and that's through right. something called tort reform which most people don't even know what it means but it's really republican code for destroy the ability of trial lawyers to to get large judgments on behalf of people who've been really badly screwed by big corporations and, and today it continues with these forced arbitration clauses yes. that say you know look AT&T uh, can scam, you know, millions of people by by tacking on ten dollars per bill per month. Right, ten dollars, not right. very much, but you've signed this agreement. You can't sue them in a class action. So are you going to take them to court over two hundred and forty dollars? Right. Uh, no, you're not. So they make millions and millions, and not necessarily AT and T, but this is how the scams work. They make millions. You can't sue the trial lawyers. You know, uh, yeah, don't have it. the money to. And it's to not about the law. The it's, a, it's about stripping the Democrats of a money source. Hang on just a second, Karen. I, I want to bump us out of here. This is the Tom Hartman program. Guy always steps on me. I'm sorry. Farron Cousins, co-host of Ring of Fire Radio, executive editor of the Trial Lawyers Magazine, ringoffireradio.com. Thank you, Farron. Thank you, Tom. To watch more clips from our programs, hit the Watch More Videos button over here. And please be sure to hit the handy-dandy subscribe button so you'll always be up to date. Tag, you're it.